Hello, everybody. How do you do, fellow kids? And welcome to the Weird Science Comics channel, where I'm going to be going through Empire number two, the big Marvel event that is written by Al Ewing and Dan Slott, script by Al Ewing, and art by Valerio Shidey. And I did say shitey, right? Yeah. And we go into this with the idea, if you watched my first video for Empire Number 1 or heard me on the podcast, anything of that, I wasn't that excited for it. And that's my main thing. I need something to get me excited. I need this story to get me hyped up to want to buy 30 plus issues of it. And I haven't gotten to that point yet. This issue will not do it either. Now, you end up having the Avengers Zero issue leading in, the Fantastic Four Zero lead, and all of these together, I'm not down with all of this. I'm not that excited. I wasn't that excited with a Kree scroll alliance heading towards Earth, but at least I knew more about the Kree and the scroll. They're heading, okay, I'll see what this is all about. Well, we end up with the big twist in the first issue is that the Kree and scroll aren't necessarily the bad guys, but the Kotati are. The Kotati who use the Avengers to dupe the Kree scroll armada so that they can take them down and then pretty much reveal themselves to be the big bads who are at this moment in the story attacking Earth, trying to overrun Earth with vegetation. They're all about getting rid of the meat bags. They are. Now, the problem I have is at the end of the first issue, Okay, you got a little bit pumped up. All right, here we go. It's the Kotati. Oh, my God, I didn't see that coming. The problem is when you get to this issue, though, is that you're going to have to now reset and give some recap, some history lessons on the Kotati, kind of like we did with the Kree and the Scroll in the first issue, and it throws the pacing off. It ends up making this feel like another number one issue, and that's because of the big reveal that you had in the first one. So a lot of this issue until the very end is recap history lessons, even the idea of, okay, well, we have the Kotati, mainly Qua and Swordsman there with the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. Well, we have to get them away so that things can kind of regroup, get together. You can't have the big battle in the second issue. Well, you do end up having the Avengers still on the blue section of the moon there with Qua, and he has them in a meat garden, a people garden. He, he keeps going on. I love gardening with the people there. Well, Thor is upset, and Uncle Thor, because he has helped Qua as he had grown up, and Qua was an Avenger, and the first Avengers baby. And that's a big thing. And you end up, Thor's very upset, but he can get them out of it. He basically just calls Molnir. If you remember, it was sent out to pretty much, you know, use a delivery system for Tony Stark's virus to shut down the Kree scroll armada. So it's still in space. He calls it back. He gets it and then ends up using the lightning to free them from all the vegetation that Qua has set up, the Katati stuff. Now you end up with Qua it to Thor. I thought that was way over the top. It's just a little thing, but I'm like, all right. But this is pretty much the most exciting in my mind that this gets this story because after this happens, Qua just he leaves. He disappears almost like, well, we'll have to get him later. Time to regroup. Well, we regroup also by giving us history lessons on the Kotati, how they were treated. And we got a little of it in the first issue, uh, but we're going to go with it again just to stress that the Kotati, they were treated bad. They ended up getting duped, all this sort of thing. But they have been planning this for a while. Swordsman there being the father of Kwa, all these things going on. They have the Death Blossom that was there before and also showing you that this is a plan that maybe the Avengers Fantastic Four, maybe the heroes of us should have seen coming or incoming. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Because there are a couple of editor's notes to go see incoming. I thought that this was Al Ewing just trying to sell some extra issues of that on the back end. Even when you have an editor's note incoming again, I'm like, I know. 
Again, it is, but it, it does slow the pacing down. It really does slow the pacing down. And you have to because it is kind of a reset of the whole story when you end up having the Kotati now as the villain. Well, we do see that there are stakes. There are things going on. There's a time frame that because Earth is being overrun by vegetation. Earth is now, if you had ever seen the life after people, it's life after people, but there's still people. They better get the hell out of there. But so you see that, all right, the stakes are there. We got to do this. The Kotati, they're attacking Earth as we speak. Let's get going. Now, what happens with the other people in the book, the other Avengers here with She-Hulk, Black Panther and Captain Marvel. They were with Swordsman, who then just pretty much is like, yep, I'm going to slice Jennifer, make a portal that is very going to be very familiar to anybody reading the X-Books. It definitely looks like a Krakoan portal. And I'm going to go through. Woo, woo, woo. He just runs away. He's out and says, hey, you know, be on our side, stand out of the way, whatever. But if you don't, you're going to be mulch. All right, we got it. Twirl your mustache a little, Swordsman. Uh, we end up going then to see the fantastic four with hulkling and the kotati attack is really really hurting the thing it's really it's getting in his cracks and and that is not sexy it's not it's almost like getting sand in your butt crack but he's getting vegetation and and seeds growing out of every crack and he's got a lot of cracks he's a crack man right it's crackhead and so you end up with them, them freaking out we need to help we need to get thing they're they're gonna overtake them and you do have hulkling step up and use his sword of space which i really want to call a space sword sword of space it doesn't flow as well right so he ends up hitting thing with this and the power of the sword of space does dissipate the kotati attack this whole deal with the vegetation it goes away Reed Richards, he's a smart guy. I don't know if you know that. He ends up using this and postulates, well, if that sword can do that, what if we had a bigger conduit of that sword's power that we can then blast out and maybe we can get all of this stuff, at least on the ship right here, you know, null and void. And Carol, Captain Marvel is there, just says, I think I understand what you're saying. I think what you want me to do is get stabbed by the sword, take all the energy in, and then explode it out. That's exactly what he wants. Uh, It's a bad butt moment for Carol, who has to kind of go past her pain threshold to the next level so that she can absorb it all. Then she explodes it out, and it does work. It ends up saving thing. All the vegetation on the ship is gone, dead. And so this is the big moment of the issue. It's not a twist. It's just a way of getting Carol a little upgraded. It gives her something different. It gives her more of her Cree heritage deal where you end up having them, including Hulkling here, knight her into the Cree accuser core and then giving her the accuser hammer, Ronan's hammer. And when she goes, even before she even grabs it, you can see the electricity between it. And yeah, it ends up reacting to her. It sings, it does. And so she ends up even thinking, boy, this is really powerful. I better watch myself. There's a little foreshadowing with that. And I did see a lot of people getting upset about this part. Like, here we go. You're trying to uplift Captain Marvel again. You're trying to get Carol in the spotlight. She, I think it's too early to say right now that she's going to be the be all end all to, to finish this. So I am not upset. Plus, I don't mind having something different for Carol. I don't mind having her be this and see what goes on. It does seem to be the idea that she's going to maybe let the power get to her a little and maybe turn. We'll see. We'll see how that is. But I do like the ending. And because of that, I'm actually going to go up on my score from what I did on the site uh, because I am a little bit excited by the end, but I still feel like it hasn't started yet. I still feel like these are preludes. We are two of six issues in, and I still feel like we're an inch into the story, but I don't mind now because you know, you end up having the team set up now. The 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 Katati, Qua, and Swordsman, they've gone off. Earth's under attack, and you do end up having 
Fantastic Four Avengers. And and they're still pretty mad at the Avengers for being duped. But at least we have some things going on. Hulkling's there to help out, which I'm glad because I do like Hulkling. Uh, be- because of all that, I am going to give it a 6.5. I still need something to grab me. I still need something to make me want to go and buy all the issues. I need something to get me so excited that I can't wait to read the next issue. And in the meantime, I have to get the tie-ins, everything. This is what I want. I'm not there yet. I think the art's great, but overall the pacing is very, very slow for a main book of a big, big event. And so hopefully with everything set now, with all this recap from both issues taken care of, we can go forward. And the third issue is where I'm looking for it to really wow me, to really get me excited, get me charged. When I'm done, I want to catch my breath. Oh, my goodness. I was bored the first time I read this. The more I read it, I started enjoying a little bit more of what was happening with Carol, which is why my score went up. Just as an aside, I gave it a five on the site because I, I was pretty bored the first time. It took me a couple read-throughs to get on board. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do, please like it below. Also, subscribe to the channel. Look on the links on the page here. And you will find all sorts of links to our podcasts and websites if you are watching This Empire. I think maybe you're a Marvel fan. We have a Marvel podcast that comes out three times a week. I know it's crazy, but we have an X-Men show that I do. We have two shows that deal with the current books, non-X-Men books and things like that. One that I do by myself and one that I do with my man, Brandon, on Tuesday night. So check that out. Check all our stuff. And thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you later.